not much to look at. But warthogs are pigs of outstanding character. They're tough, loyal, clever, and comical. Our film follows the surprisingly eventful lives of three generations of warthogs all living together. They'll never win a beauty contest, but I think you'll find they have a peculiar charm all their own. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you, and by Canon, providing the power of imaging to express your visions at home and work. And by Ford, we drew on our global resources, tapped into advanced thinking from around the world, brought innovation and quality home, and built a totally new car. It's called Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. This is the romantic image of East Africa. The sunlit stage for a wildlife spectacular. Not every creature here is a natural star. The warthog doesn't have the looks to attract much attention, unlike Africa's more famous characters. But what they lack in looks, they make up for in personality. Lake Nakuru National Park in Kenya is home to thousands of warthogs. They're shy and skittish animals who prefer to stay in the background. In this story, they are the stars. The central characters are all female, three generations of one family, a grandmother, her daughter, and granddaughter. They live in a triple burrow, three holes with connecting tunnels and underground caverns. The three sows give birth within days of each other in separate tunnels. At three weeks old, even warthogs are adorable. These tiny babies belong to the youngest of the three females. She's only about two years old, and this is her first litter. All three mothers are now anxious to reunite. As soon as their babies are strong enough, the females leave their maternity dens. The oldest female is about nine years old, as is indicated by her enormous teeth.
The yearlings from last year's litters were left to fend for themselves while their mothers gave birth. The young females are now accepted back into the family to help raise their new siblings. The males, however, will have a different fate. Warthogs raise their young communally. In this extended family, all the babies will benefit from the combined efforts of three mothers from three generations. The new piglets are still too young to spend the hottest part of the day above ground. Their burrows are a vital sanctuary where they can escape from the heat and from predators. A family of jackals has recently moved into an abandoned burrow nearby. To feed their own young, the jackal parents may try to kill the baby warthogs. Out on the plains, the temperature rises to 100 degrees. Now that their mothers are back home, the males from last year's litters head for the triple burrow. They smell their family underground, but they get a hostile reception. Adult males sometimes kill young piglets, even their own relatives. Now that there are tiny babies, their mothers seem nervous when their year-old sons come home. Confused by their mother's rejection and unable to take refuge underground, the young males are left out in the midday sun. They head for Lake Nakuru, famous for flamingos. Sometimes over two million of these birds come here to feed. Nakuru is a soda lake and too saline to drink. Wildlife in the park gathers to drink at the river. It's a favorite place for the young male warthogs. The adult males also spend the heat of the day near water, either alone or in small bachelor groups. The males have much bigger facial warts and longer tusks than the females. These huge canine teeth are used for slashing and tearing vegetation, and they can make effective weapons. Even though the youngsters are only half grown, they're still muscular and their speed makes them difficult to bring down, even for a leopard.
Success at last, but it's only a consolation prize. Leopards eat a variety of prey, but killing pelicans is unusual. The young males were lucky this time, but without the protection of the adult females, they'll be vulnerable for months. A jackal is always on the lookout for prey. It has a reputation as a scavenger, but in reality, it's a very capable hunter, and it's especially fond of baby warthogs. The sows will not tolerate jackals near their burrow. As the piglets get older, the family ventures farther from home to feed. This is the moment the jackal has been waiting for. But an angry sow is a formidable adversary, and she'll risk her life in defense of her family. Male warthogs play no part in defending the babies. The mothers are left to take sole responsibility. Females combined efforts keep the jackal at bay long enough for one of the sows to herd some of the piglets down a bolt hole. Once they're safe, she returns immediately to help defend those still in danger. The piglets instinctively run for their lives, terrified by the victim's squeals. After the brutal encounter, one baby has been killed and a few are lost. The young jackals were born five months ago. Their weaning coincides with the birth of the piglets. The parents need to catch up to four piglets a day to feed their growing pups. The lost piglets must find their way home and get underground quickly if they're to escape from the hungry jackals. Instinct leads them home, but the danger isn't over yet. A strange family has moved in, and even a female warthog may attack unrelated babies. Youngsters retreat down one of the unoccupied entrances to the triple burrow. After several hours, the females return to the burrow, having abandoned the search for their missing offspring. The interlopers are wary. The smell of the resident family is strong. They're not prepared to fight to maintain possession of the burrow. 
the mother returns after her long search. To her surprise, she is greeted by her babies. They are still alive, although hot and very thirsty. Even though the sows live together, they will only nurse their own young. The largest piglet in this group knows he's with the wrong female. He recognizes his own mother's grunts. Warthogs sometimes share their burrows with birds. This one is home to a family of anteater chats. Like the warthogs, the birds live communally. Fledglings from previous broods help to raise the youngest chicks. Sharing living quarters benefits both parties. Warthogs attract insects, which provide the chats with food and the birds sound the alarm if they spot danger, so the sows can judge if it's safe to feed. Female warthogs prefer the open plains. They rarely venture into the shade and shadows. Dappled light is the perfect camouflage for a spotted cat. As evening approaches, a leopard calls her cub. Bush pigs, a large relative of the warthog, prefer woodlands to the savanna. Shy and rarely seen, they rely on thick cover to escape from predators. She calls for her cub again. He's nearly full grown now. Although they're solitary cats, the bond between a mother and her offspring is long-lasting. The female will share her food and her affection until the cub is two years old and can hunt for himself. The leopards usually start hunting soon after dark, so the sows must get their piglets underground before nightfall. The yearling males are also aware of the dangers of the night. Once again, they return to the triple burrow and try to rejoin the family. The sows are still hostile. Young males can be unruly, and the new babies could easily get crushed in the confined space underground. <laughs> it 
it threatens to be a long, cold night for the young males. Just before nightfall, they find an empty burrow. It will give them some shelter, but it's too shallow to offer a safe night's sleep. The young males cower near the entrance of their temporary shelter. A pair of hyenas picks up their scent. These adolescent hyenas are not brave enough to venture beyond the entrance. They can smell warthogs, but they can't yet tell the difference between a defenseless youngster and an angry old sow. Luckily for the young males, the hyenas aren't prepared to take any risks. It's daybreak, and the jackal family is waking to a chill in the air. Warthogs lie around in huddled heaps, waiting for the sun to warm them up. The leopard knows the hogs are slow and sleepy in the morning, so it's an ideal time for her to hunt. She patrols her territory, checking burrows, just in case an unwary youngster has overslept. <laughs> Unaware of the leopard above, some of the young males are still sleeping. A small movement in the shallow burrow gives them away. The struggle underground has tired the leopard, but she must quickly hide her kill from scavengers before collecting her cub from the forest. It's now the dry season, and all the animals in the park will soon feel its effect. The rivers have dried up, and Lake Nakuru is evaporating fast. As the Soda Lake recedes, the water gradually gets shallower and increasingly salty. Flamingos are one of the few animals which can drink the lake water.
A spring still runs into a far corner of the lake. It's the only source of fresh water left. Every day, white pelicans come to Nakuru, not to drink, but to wash soda crystals from their feathers. As the lake continues to shrink, the soda gets so concentrated, the pelicans leave and fly to a freshwater lake. For most of the other animals in the park, there is no escape. When the grass is reduced to dry stubble, the grazers start to go hungry. But the warthogs can grub up nutritious bulbs and roots with their strong muscular snouts. As hunger and heat become increasingly oppressive, the lure of the forest proves irresistible to some of the larger males. It's cooler under the trees. The new arrivals have not gone unnoticed. This is a chance for the young leopard to practice his hunting skills under the watchful eye of his mother. Warthogs are much less afraid of the young leopard than he is of them. But when he spots the adult female, his confident stand becomes a prudent retreat. A constant stream of potential targets now file into the forest. Reassured by his mother's presence, the cub keeps on trying. <laughs> his attack is half-hearted, but he's learning. The leopards will not go hungry for long. Beyond the forest, both the land and the animals are parched. The intense heat is more life-threatening than predators. The warthogs compete with the jackals for shade. The jackal pups are also learning to hunt. The warthog family is surrounded, but the sows seem unconcerned. Their efforts to chase off the enemy are only token gestures. <laughs> the young warthog is bigger and stronger now, but he's still outnumbered five to one. Even at this age, warthogs have strong characters. The jackal pups won't starve. There will soon be plenty of food to scavenge. It's the warthogs which need to be tough to survive the hard times that lie ahead. This year, the rains are late, and the dry season is turning into a drought. There's almost no grass and little fresh water. Once again, the warthogs have the advantage over the grazers. They're omnivores, and as the antelope begin to die, they provide food for the family.
Now the river has stopped flowing, its bed reduced to dry sand. There is water down there. The impala can sense it, but they can't get to it. As always, the warthogs are resourceful. When they smell water underground, they use their powerful snouts to dig down to it. All they'll get is a few mouthfuls of muddy water, but it's enough to keep them going for now. The artful baboons wait to cash in on the warthog's hard work. They are thirsty, but no better than to risk being gored by a sharp tusk. As Africa seems to hold her breath, waiting for the rains, even the warthogs are suffering. Now too weak to root, one of the sows is starving. Her piglets are in misery too. Their mother has little milk. Eating dead grass is futile, but they are very hungry. Weak from lack of food and water, the sow must get out of the sun. Her youngsters struggle to keep up. Their mother is exhausted, but if she doesn't suckle her youngsters, they will die. Even though she is literally on her knees, her maternal instincts are strong. Throughout the park, baby warthogs are dying of starvation. The tawny eagle gets much of its food by scavenging, and now it takes advantage of the plight of others. The eagle is disturbed by the family returning to their burrow, but it makes no attempt to carry off its meal. There's plenty for it to eat in this drought-stricken land. Hunger forces the sows to compete for food. They're so desperate, they'll even eat their own kind. The smell of blood makes the females nervous. But when a squabble threatens to become too serious, they flee rather than fight. Even the fresh groundwater below the riverbed has now dried up, and again, it's the ever resourceful warthogs that provide a lifeline. They dig shallow pits near the lake and wait for the water to filter through the mud. 
As it seeps into the pool, it loses some of its salinity. It's still salty, but it's drinkable. It will keep the hogs and the baboons going for a while, but they can't survive on it for long. At last, there's a sign that the rains are on the way. For many animals, it's too late. The strong winds blow up dust storms, but they'll also bring rain clouds. While most animals are starving, the leopards have been feasting. At least the hunters will end the misery for many of them. In contrast to their prey, the predators are in peak condition. The hyenas are thriving, feasting on the victims of the famine. Massive teeth are no defense against a drought. Finally, the sky opens up. The rainy season in Nakuru lasts a couple of months. The land is refreshed with new growth. The Triple Burrow family is still together. Though not all the youngsters have made it, all three sows have survived. Remarkably, even the starving female pulled through. The river has overflowed and the swamp is flooded once again. A hippo on land and a cantankerous Cape buffalo are two of the most dangerous animals in Africa. When the pair clashes, the outcome is uncertain. But the long fight for survival is not over yet. The females will soon be ready to mate. The male warthogs need to be in top form for the battle that lies ahead. A male warthog's main aim in life is to win as many mates as possible. 
Their long tusks and large size are important weapons in the age-old competition for the opposite sex. As the rutting season begins, the mature males size each other up. Each of them tries to intimidate the other without resorting to violence. The leopard is one of the few cats which will launch an attack from above. But taking on an adult boar is risky, even if she has surprise on her side and can strike with lightning speed. The hog is unaware of any danger. The leopard suffers for her rash move, but the wound is only skin deep and will heal. For the predators, the easy life is over for now. The few weeks after the rains belong to the grazing animals. Giraffes give birth throughout the year, but at Nakuru, most are born soon after the wet season. Throughout her two-hour labor, this female has been accompanied by a lone male. The calf's first experience of life was the shock of being dropped from six feet. Newborn animals are all extremely vulnerable to predators. Until it can run, a baby giraffe is an easy target. It must get to its feet and find its first drink of mother's milk. Within half an hour, it's up and standing nearly six feet tall. In just a few more hours, it will be able to follow its mother and join the herd. Waterbuck also give birth shortly after the rains. This calf is only a few minutes old, yet it's already on its feet. While the youngster tests its legs, the mother eats the afterbirth. This may seem unpleasant, but for many animals, it can be a life-saving strategy. The afterbirth provides vital nourishment. The smell from the recent birth attracts a young buck. This headbutting and rubbing could hurt the calf, though it seems he is being extremely careful not to gore it with his horns.
By rubbing against the infant, he may be trying to mark it with his own scent. The strange behavior alerts the new mother. She goes to her youngster to make sure that he's okay after his encounter with the male. He's a bit shaky on his legs now, but by tomorrow, he'll be able to outrun a person. The calf will soon go into hiding while his mother goes off to feed. For now, he gets her undivided attention. The warthogs are still in their rutting season. As soon as one of the females comes into estrus, a top-ranking male joins the family. He follows the sow wherever she goes, only leaving her side to chase off rivals. There are limits to how far a female will allow any male to follow her. The burrows now serve as a temporary refuge from the persistent and unwelcome suitor. Once again, the male is left out in the cold. The dominant male can't afford to break his vigil now. He must keep guard against other suitors and waits outside the burrow for her to come out again. The male camps out and waits until she's ready. She calls all of the shots. As soon as there are stirrings underground, the male calls to encourage the female to join him. Rival males are still out there, watching and waiting for a chance to take over. This morning, the female is in a more receptive mood and no longer rejects the male's advances. When the females are at the height of estrus, the challenges between the males become deadly serious. The massive warts on their faces make the individual look bigger but they are not just for show. They protect the eyes and jaws during head-on duels over the right to mate. The female anxiously awaits the outcome.
A dominant boar in his prime has every chance of mating with all the females in the family, since they all come into heat within days of each other. Sometimes defeated males lose more than the right to mate. All the members of the family are now a year older. More than half the piglets have survived. For now, they're oblivious to the danger the future may bring as they concentrate on the simple pleasures of childhood. Warthogs may not be one of the most handsome characters on the African scene, but they do have a surprising charm. In its own way, warts and all, the warthog is a star. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. And by Canon, providing the power of imaging to express your visions at home and work. And by Ford, maker of the new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. Stay tuned for National Geographic on Assignment, next at 9 here on Channel 36.